And what a story. Wrestling Observer Live. We got Thunderstruck that plays all the time here on this program. And what a coincidence that WWE is about to debut Thunderdome. What in God's name is a Thunderdome? This is from WrestlingObserver.com. WWE officially announced Monday they are heading to Orlando, Florida's Amway Center, starting with this Friday's SmackDown, which will feature the debut of Thunderdome, a virtual fan experience that will feature video boards, pyro, lasers, and drone cameras. The goal is to bring some visual life and a return to fan interaction into their televised product in an effort to turn the tide of sliding viewership. They also released their August schedule, which includes Raw SmackDown, SummerSlam, the August 30th Payback Pay-Per-View, and well, that's actually it because NXT is going to remain at at Full Sail University. But if you're excited for Thunderdome, and quite frankly, I can't tell you how excited I am to see this wacky Thunderdome starting this coming Friday. We got a press release which includes quotes from, of all people, Kevin Dunn, who talks about this Thunderdome. Kevin Dunn has been with this company for about 100 years. And if you look at, like, old... I'm talking... WWE shows so old that they actually have credits airing at the end. We're talking like the mid-80s. Kevin Dunn's name right there in the credits. If if you love WWE production, well, you can thank Kevin Dunn. If you hate when WWE zooms in those cameras and shakes the cameras all around when these attacks occur, that's also Kevin Dunn. The release states WWE's Amway Center residency will continue for this foreseeable future. And Raw, SmackDown, it's a residency, by the way. And pay-per-view programming will be produced on closed sets with only essential personnel in attendance. WWE will continue to administer its health and safety protocols for talent, crew, and employees in conjunction with the production, including PCR testing for COVID-19, social distancing, and wearing masks. Thunderdome was created in tandem with The Famous Group, a California-based company that specializes in both physical and virtual fan experiences with an extensive history of clients and events. Starting Monday night, fans can register for their virtual seat on WWE's social media channels or their new website. WWE did not announce whether they were indeed returning to all live programming, but with the Thunderdome launch, that would appear to be confirmed. Well, I can tell you the plan is Raw and SmackDown live every week from now on, starting on Friday. NXT is going to remain at full sale, etc. But that's the story. I have no idea what they're going to do, but I know it's going to be outlandish. And if I see it and it sucks, I'll let you know. If I see it and I love it, I'll let you know. But I am ready to give them the benefit of the doubt. I cannot wait until Friday to see the Thunderdome. Good. I'm glad I'm not the only one then. One of the things we have How could you not be excited for this? I know. One of the things we've complained about with them has been the show has looked exactly the same as it has for 25 years. And whether they do something wacky like... You know, money in the bank where everybody's running around behind the scenes or they decide to do a raw underground. They needed something like this. They can absolutely use something like this. So I'm absolutely willing to give them the benefit of the doubt with this. I looked up the famous group. I'm not sure if I understand anything more about them now than I did before I looked them up. This is their tagline when you look them up on their website and you ask them, what are you all about? When you inspire and engage a live audience, they become fans. For more than 20 years, we've created passionate fans for the biggest brands, venues, and events in the world. We begin working with each of our client partners by deeply understanding their brand, their goals, and their audience. We then execute with a word I don't creative. think, uh, I hate to jump in, I don't think anybody completely understands a WWE brand, but go ahead. <laughs> We then execute with award-winning creative, rock-solid production, and proprietary technology. Actually, that last line sounds like it's right out of Kevin Dunn's playbook right there as far as word salad with uh, uh, award-winning creative, rock-solid production, and proprietary technology. But 
We'll see whatever proprietary technology that they decide to lend to WWE, but to take the direction that uh, other sports have done as far as using fans on Zoom or using uh, virtual fans to set up in the sands, they have enough money at their disposal to do a bunch of cool-looking technology. Does it come across that way or not? Who knows? But the aesthetics definitely need to change. They needed something to shake some things up. And the drone camera idea, I mean, look, I'm all for everything that they have listed so far i'm all for how it actually works out in execution we'll have to find out we will have to find out i mean i i am thinking a little bit about that uh at smackdown show on friday and retribution i believe is the name of the group is that right there's yes. there's redemption i think dave and i called it redemption retribution not that it matters in tira anti-ratings but anyway i mean I will say that when they have been doing their run-ins and WWE starts doing all of that weird camera work where they go from a professional wrestling company to some dude on the street with a cell phone and it's like from really far away and it's shaking around and it's zooming in, that sucks. Yeah. So I'm hoping that with WWE's production values that they currently have a new, bigger building and this company here that they're working with i i hope that everybody working together actually makes something really fun and exciting but at the end of the day you know one of the reasons they're moving into the amway center and one of the reasons they're doing this is because there is a feeling that well if you look at the ron smackdown numbers i mean they have they have plummeted I mean, Raw is hitting all-time lows over the last month. All-time lows. I'm talking dating back to 93. All-time lows. And meanwhile, on Wednesday nights, you know, AEW did a show the other night that was the best number they'd done since February, which was before there even was a pandemic. And so, of course, WWE is looking for every reason. Why are they doing all right and we're doing all-time lows? Well, the answer can't be that, you know, the storytelling is better or the matches are more exciting, or they don't do a commercial one minute in every match like they do on every WWE show. It must be so. It must be the building. <laughs> it must be the building. So we're gonna move into the Amway Center, and which, by the way, it's funny because it's like they're doing this for every show except NXT, which is going head to head with AEW. We're gonna move into the Amway Center. We're gonna liven the place up. We're gonna try all these wacky new things. At the end of the day, the reality is. It's still going to be all about the storytelling for WWE, whether they can create stars, whether they can make compelling long-term story arcs, all of the things that they're not doing right now. You can you can move into a fancy building, you can have drone cams and all of this wacky stuff, and I'm sure SmackDown, I would be stunned if Friday Night SmackDown did not at least hit 2 million viewers. But, of course, that's going to happen the first week. It's going to happen the first week on Raw. In fact, I have one person who's predicting that Raw tonight is going to start really high with everybody expecting Thunderdome to start tonight. It doesn't. Tonight's a taped show. But the first week is going to be big, and after that, it's all going to be about the actual content of the show. The matches, the interviews, and the storylines. And if those are no good, I mean, you could do Thunderdome on the moon, and it's not going to matter.